the Porsche 917K in Gran Turismo 7 is a very expensive car. Is it the best way to make money in Gran Turismo 7? In this video, I'm gonna go through everything you need to know about this car, provide you with an awesome 700 PP tune to go and dominate the Le Mans World Touring Car 700 Championship. 18 million credits is a significant amount of money, even in Gran Turismo 7. And is it worth it? I'm going to go through, I'm going to buy it now. I'm going to get a 700pp tune for you. I'm going to show you some gameplay footage of the Le Mans race to show you exactly the strategy to use and give you a few pointers on how you can ch change that tune to be more to your specific level of driving style. You may be very familiar with this car already from the S10 license challenge. Wet around Spa was a very, very challenging uh, challenge. And in this video, because we're running on the 700 PP tune, the power is slightly detuned. So the car is much, much nicer to drive. Um, so yeah, we're going to buy this 18 million credits. Cha-ching. There we go. Boom. Uh, I'm going to drive it out of the legendary auto dealership now. Customization wise, you can put most of the wheels on the car and the way it works with the rear wheel it's got a really deep dish to it some some of them have a really big barrel some of them have the spokes really deeply uh, dished and offset to them but most of the wheels look really quite cool and i like what they've done to try and give you a modern twist uh, to allow you to put multiple different wheels on this car so i'm really happy to see they've got some good wheel customization available in wheel and tire selections but that's about it when it comes to tuning and customization for the visual aspect of your car. You can't change custom parts. You can't add any racing items. Uh, no number plates. You can also do a full livery customization. And yeah, for the tuning parts to add to the vehicle, again, not a great deal of options here available. All the tires are available. Uh, power restrictor and ballast. I would highly recommend uh, buying both of those ones. They'll be used in the build uh, for this 700pp uh, tune. Uh, and a lot of other things are pre-installed but no turbocharger available uh, you can increase body rigidity we're not going to bother with that for the moment um, looking through the other parts here we're going to fit the fully customizable racing transmission um, that is the best transmission to use and that is the one we're going to use in this video uh, we're going to buy all of the racing medium and racing soft tires but we're only going to use racing hard tires in this build uh, we will also go to the extreme section and buy the wet and intermediate tyres because the uh, Le Mans 700 PP race, uh, it does have rain affected uh, the majority of the times in the race. And that is everything we need. Now, the interesting thing is I couldn't find a brake balance controller. Let me know in the comments below if I've missed it because I couldn't find a way to change the brake balance and I couldn't find a way to add the brake balance controller. Anyway, we're going for the World Touring Car 700. Is this a glitch? Because technically we're not using a touring car. Again, let me know in the comments below. But here is the tune I'm going to be using. I'll explain to you a little bit of details about it. So racing hard tyres is what we'll be starting on. Uh, downforce wise, uh, 200 to the rear, a little bit less on the front. Here are all the parts that are installed in the vehicle. Not many, as you can see. Uh, the important thing to note here, I've got significant changes to ballast, ballast positioning. I've got a separate video how to get rid of oversteer. Uh, make sure you go and check that one out afterwards. And also the uh, LSD, uh, the braking sensitivity is very sensitive on this car. I've got a full video explaining everything you need to know about LSDs in Gran Turismo 7. But here are the settings that I recommend to start with initially. This full tune was available to the channel members ahead of time. Check out below this video for details on channel membership. First thing we'll do for the race though is to use fuel map number six. We're going to use fuel map number six for the whole race uh, just to get the fuel efficiency out of the car. We can get at least easily to lap number three which gives us a great chance to see what the weather's doing and plan our strategy accordingly. Uh, into turn one, uh, we're going to get the brakes very conservatively. The brakes on this car aren't fantastic so mostly the 200 meter boards will be your braking references for any of the significant braking points in this track. All of the chicanes down the Mulsanne straight and a lot of the braking points into some of the slower corners. Braking around the 200 meter board is where you want to be. The car is really nice to drive. It's really nicely controlled. Uh, second gear and below, actually never use first gear. Uh, second gear and below, uh, be very cautious on corner exits because you can light up the tires a little bit, exiting the corners in second gear as we're going to display right now. Just a bit of caution getting on that throttle before you get to third gear. Once you're into third gear, the car is really super stable. We've got great top speed down a lot of these straights here. So we're going to be blown by cars left, right and centre. Skipping forwards to the end of lap number three. Keeping an eye on the weather radar from lap two onwards. 
and although we're in a batch of rain right now we don't need to be worried until we see the darker patches of rain on the rain radar and that's coming up right now so right now the track is dry uh, and we're going to go into the pits and we're actually going to put uh, intermediate tires on in preparation for when those dark rain um, areas come on the the rain radar here so it takes quite a long time to get into the pits uh the guys really don't know what i'm doing because i'm saying to the guys it's intermediate tires guys and they're looking at the sky it's not raining it's not raining but it is the right thing to do you can change the intermediate tires ahead of the rain and then when the rain comes you're on the right tire all the other drivers in the race that pit on lap number three won't be taking the wet or intermediate tyres. They'll just be going by exactly how the track conditions are and not predicting what the weather is going to be doing. So uh, at this pit stop, we're also going to fully fuel the car. Uh, it might be possible with some short shifting to do it as a, as a one stop race, but we're going to have to pit at the end of lap number six uh, to really just uh, take another little bit of fuel on board to get to the end of the race. Now, other drivers around will be pitting uh, similarly uh, I think it's only the Lamborghini that can go to lap number four on its uh, fuel uh, but exiting the pit lane here uh, looking at the window wipers on now so the rain is starting to come down and we are having an absolute nightmare on pit exit so cautious on uh, pit exit guys um, it just kicks off the AR drivers really don't seem to have a clue um, but it shouldn't really suffer us too much because we've got so much pace over these guys. Now I'm playing this on hard difficulty, it's what I always do just to try out these, these tunes and uh, races on hard difficulty to make sure it is as good as it can be for you guys. Um, but you can lower the difficulty to make sure you get the payout every single time, that's no problem at all. Skipping forwards now, middle of lap number four and you can see we are deep in all the rain clouds and to be honest not a significant amount of rain has come down but we're on the right tyre for the conditions I think. Other drives around will probably start to have to pit because uh, of the rain getting harder and harder. But we're okay just to run these tyres uh, all the way through. Because there's water on the track, the tyre wear on these intermediate tyres isn't really any problem at all. Uh, I've been playing this race all the way through with uh, cockpit view. I uh, call it poor man's uh, VR because I don't have a VR. I don't even have a PS5 yet. So let me know in the comments below if you're still on PS4 if you'd like to help support me and support the channel uh, creating this content then make sure you check out the membership there'll be links in the description below all of the channel memberships everything going forwards will help me to provide better videos for you guys also this Porsche 917 uh, tune and setup was already posted to my members uh, at the moment I finished uh, the setup I posted it to my members group uh, they can use the setup whenever they want to and then afterwards i'm going to make the video to show it to to you guys so if you want setups ahead of time then you can join as a channel member towards the end of lap number four we're going to get to the back of the leader and just send it all the way around the outside through the porsche curves and just dominate porsche through the porsche curves are oh, just made for it uh, and it's really good to be using this le mans legend car around le mans i really wish though they would do a historic uh, Le Mans cars uh, race they should really make some different money grinding races come on PD you can do better than this uh, whoops bit too deep on the brakes there but it, it's all good so yeah the one thing with this car guys I would just brake a little bit earlier than you may be used to uh, driving other cars for this uh, money grind race end of lap number six we're going to need to pit for fuel again there is three minutes 50 left in the race which is basically one lap so we're going to need a one lap splash and dash uh, to get to the end of this race maybe with some aggressive short shifting and uh, even more fuel saving than we already do it may be possible to squeeze it to a one-stop strategy uh, i'm just going to put the racing hard tires back on the car the the track is almost dry uh, so we're just going to do a splash and dash to finish the race we're going to slightly overfill the car just more than one lap's worth of fuel just so towards the end of the race we can turn up the uh, the fuel map and really get a bit of power down the straights at Le Mans and the sun actually blazing as we come across the start finish line to finish the race um, we could probably do a faster race time it is a 30 minute time so you need to be at least 30 minutes we could probably start to uh, push harder to get closer to that 30 minute race time ideally be crossing the line 30 minutes and one second and finishing the race that is the most efficient way to make money yeah so 31 minutes 10 seconds I can knock one minute 10 seconds off that no problem we've got a spin coming out the pits hitting those other guys i could have just been faster overall lack of penalties i think we're all good there guys so there we have it guys the mo one of the most expensive cars in gran turismo 7 can be used to make a significant amount of money every hour in gran turismo 7 and 
Honestly, guys, it's a fantastic car. It's a really enjoyable car to drive. Uh, it looks amazing. It's a, it's a legendary icon from 1970. Uh, such an iconic car and it's so good that you can use it to make money in Gran Turismo 7. If you have enjoyed this video then make sure you hit that like button, make sure you subscribe to the channel for more videos just like this and make sure you ring the bell icon to be notified whenever I upload another video. On screen right now will be links to other videos which you'll find useful to tune your car and make it exactly how you want it to be in Gran Turismo 7. Thank you very much for watching and we'll catch you in the next one.